We're joined once again by Merritt Centennial's head coach and GM Luke Pierce. Luke, your team announced uh, just last week, late last week, the details of uh, one of your spring camps that's going to be here in Merritt, uh, April 1st to 3rd. Uh, what sort of players are you looking for to come to that camp? Well, we're going to have, uh, you know, hopefully a good mix of uh, some good young talent that, you know, possibly isn't even of age yet to play in our league, and and then some guys that are uh, that are ready to get going and and compete for a spot on our team full time here. So um, we want to get a good mix. We'd obviously expect to see a, another large local contingent here and um, some junior B guys, a lot of major midget players, and some out of province guys and. Um, and just really kind of increase the exposure of the uh, Centennials Hockey Club. You had six players from last year's spring camp make it through main camp and wind up on your roster this season. Season before that, Sylvan Harper was the only one there. But how important is this spring camp to make an impression on yourself and your scouting staff uh, into making that invite to main camp? Yeah, it's going to be structured a lot differently this year with uh, you know the camps. And spring camps will be similar to what they have been in the past. But our main camp is... Uh, going to be limited probably to just 40 players so we're going to probably pick uh, you know maybe anywhere from six to ten guys from the Merritt camp and then we're going to put on another camp in Abbotsford sometime in mid-June uh, just waiting to get the final dates for that and we'll probably add another you know six or ten from that camp and and bring them in with our veteran guys to to main camp and really kind of go through a, a true evaluation and, and training camp as opposed to having a a large contingent of players that uh, you know makes it difficult to get a real good sense of what you've got there. So uh, it's important for guys to you know show their best here, and, and not only for us. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity to get exposure to other BCHL clubs, and they see if players have success here that uh, they might get invites from other teams. I mean, we had uh, Colton Sparrow comes to mind last year was at our camp and played very well, and uh, and is playing for Vernon now. So. It's uh, obviously we want to keep those guys here, but it's also a good chance to expose yourself to other teams. And in terms of uh, your program, a lot of people will look at uh, the the lineup that you've got. Ton of guys eligible to return. You've only got uh, I think four graduating this season at this point. Uh, you know whether it's Jeff Jones due to you know a college commitment or your twenty year olds moving on. Uh, do you think that that might be a bit of a deterrent, or are these guys in a situation where they can definitely play their way onto this team? Yeah, we've always wanted to have the mentality of, uh, you know, you, you come to camp with the the intention of, of making a roster, and um, if you can push a guy out who's been here before, then uh, all the power to you. But, you know, I think what it does, uh, there's two ways really to attract talent, and one would have been last year where we had a lot of openings and everybody knew it and, you know, kind of flooded our camp. And this year I think uh, what's going to be attractive to players is that, hey, this looks like it's going to be a real good team next year and, and possibly a contender, so... Uh, we're going to attract some, what I would expect, some real high-end talent here. And, you know, we've got some, some very good young players who uh, we're hoping will bring with them, um, you know, some other connections to guys that, you know, might not have looked at merit in the past. And with the talent we've got here now, it usually attracts more talent. So we're pretty excited about the, uh, the upcoming year and, and two years. And that being said, uh, you're looking at obviously the ages and roster numbers and this kind of thing. Uh, what age group are you looking at specifically for uh, not only this spring camp here in Merritt, but also the one in June in Abbotsford? Well, I think our biggest focus is, uh, you know, the 93s, 94, 95s. Um, you know, we'd likely try to have another 16-year-old or two in the lineup. And, uh, you know, I think a strong contingent of 17-year-olds and then, you know, some good quality 18-year-olds. I think our our 92 age group, the 19-year-olds, is, is pretty set here. We've got a pretty strong core group that uh, really has made up our team this year. And, um, obviously we'll be maxed out on our 20 year olds. So, uh, it'll have to, you know, a lot can change between now and August, but, uh, we're probably, our biggest focus is on the, on the young group. And in terms of the 96s, you mentioned that you want to have some that, uh, that might not be eligible to play in the league this year. You had that situation last year as well. Uh, what are you expecting from guys like that, knowing that, uh, that they can't play in the BCHL next season? Well, I think a big focus for us now going forward is that uh, you know we've kind of set ourselves up that we should be pretty stable for the next few years as far as you know not needing to fill a ton of roster spots, and we want to get some young guys in here and you know bring them through to main camp and really expose them to to the level they're going to have to get to, and you know they'll come in you know right through to main camp and with you know a clear knowledge of knowing that they're not going to play this year because they are too young and. Um, but we want to let them know that this is the place they want to be in a year or two years from now, and that's going to be a big focus for us going ahead. 
And I guess that's uh, where you sort of look at it more as a, a development point of view as opposed to, uh, hey, let's crack a spot on the roster point of view. Yeah, exactly. I think last year, you know, we had such a huge need, uh, so many holes to fill that we had to spend most of our time looking at players who were ready to step in and make an impact right away. And to do, uh, you know, a good stability type building job here, we have to start looking for future and we have to identify players, um, you know, that won't be ready for another two years, but we have to know who they are now and and really get our hooks into them because uh, the competition in this league to recruit high-end talent is is unbelievable. So uh, the earlier we can get started, the better, and and hopefully it'll just make things that much easier going forward. At this point, 12 months ago, I know that you were uh, you didn't have a whole lot of resources when it came to scouting staff. Uh, how's it gone this season building your scouting staff up, and how much is your is your scouting staff going to have an input on who comes to this camp or the one in Abbotsford either? Well, the scouting staff has been a you know major focus for us, and um, you know we've recently named Kirk Starr as our, our head scout, and he's uh, you know hit the ground running. He's been doing a lot of work already. He's got some guys helping him out. We've had uh, you know the guys that have been working with us for the last year or so continue to you know get their names in there and and uh, mention some players. So um, a lot of the success we've had this year came from some of the scouts that had just got started for us and, and mentioned some players. You know, like Reese Wilcox and Brent Fletcher and guys like that, who, uh, who we really had no idea about, and were all brought on by our scouting staff. So they're going to take on a much bigger role this off season than they did last year, just simply because we didn't have them. And uh, the camp in Abbotsford, especially, will be pretty much uh, all talent brought in by our scouting group. So we're looking forward to that. I think it's going to you know spread things out a lot better for us, and and hopefully attract a lot more talent. Now for you, it, having the two camps, which is again something that you didn't have the luxury of doing last year, obviously you get looks at a lot more players. Are you looking at it being sort of like an exclusive situation where you have kids from, say, maybe the interior and Alberta come to the camp here in Merritt in uh, April, and then you've got a lot of kids from the island or the coast or even down in the States come to that camp in Abbotsford? Yeah, that's you know the most likely scenario. We're going to focus a lot of our... Uh you know, invites and, and recruiting for the Merritt camp on out of province stuff and, and the Okanagan, the Kootenays, the northern kids and, and hopefully bring a lot here and then, you know, main focus in Abbotsford will be with the lower mainland and the island and uh, you know, there's obviously competing uh camps on the same weekend as ours in Merritt and if there's kids from the Okanagan who are busy at the U sixteens or going to other camps and um, you know they're not available, then that's fine, and and we'll have the luxury of having a second camp that they can attend. So, but I would expect a you know a large contingent of players to be here from uh, from the Okanagan and and the Kootenays, and then you know majority in the Abbotsford camp from the Lower Mainland. Now we talked about how important spring camp is, and you look at like I say those six that ended up cracking your roster that attended last year. But is that being said, spring camp the be all end all on making this team, or is uh, August something that a player can look at too if they have a prior commitment? Yeah, it's always, you know, we're we're never going to turn away uh, a top-end prospect from our group, but I think it is important to establish for players that, you know, Merritt is a place they want to be and they want to go through the steps of making it there. And, and we had a lot of players last year who attended other camps and, and then phoned us late in the, in the uh, exhibition season to see if they could still have an opportunity here. And, you know, I, I just felt that uh, loyalty has to come into play and the kids who came here and worked through everything uh, deserved a chance to play on our team. And, um, it's kind of the philosophy we're going to take through, and but we understand at the same time that you know kids are busy in the summer. They got a lot of commitments, and uh, we'll take each one case by case, kind of, and and make sure that we're giving ourselves the best chance to win some games come uh, September. I meant I noticed on the uh, media release that uh, you've put goaltenders is by invite only. Uh, obviously, you're looking at Lino and Tyler both eligible to come back next season. It, you made goaltending um, uh, it was open for spring camp, but by invite only for main camp. Uh, is that sort of why you look at it? Because you know a goaltender coming in, there's only two spots open on on any given team. Yeah, well, there's just such a large contingent of goaltenders, and uh, what happens last year we found out is if you leave it open. You know, within three days, your camp is full, and uh, you might miss on some guys that uh, you haven't even had a chance to talk to yet. So, we're going to, uh, you know, kind of be pretty selective in our in our approach to goaltending, and um, you know, 
because there's two guys here, obviously it's going to probably deter some people, but you never know uh, what's going to change between now and then, whether, you know, Lino ends up getting a scholarship or Tyler or, or you know, both of them. So um, we're looking at anywhere from needing no goalies to two goalies and, and <laughs> only one goalie, so we don't really know. But we're going to make sure that we bring in the right guys and, and they all will understand the uh, the situation they're getting into here. All right, Luke, thanks so much for this. Before I let you run, anything else that you wanted to add about uh, spring camp? I would assume we're going to get more details about the the Abbotsford camp as time goes along here. Yeah, the Abbotsford camp, we're just looking at some final uh, dates here to figure out. And, um, you know, right now we've got the 24th kind of penciled in that weekend, but it possibly could be the weekend before. So we'll have those dates released here within the week. And um, and we encourage people to get out there and and, uh, sign up quickly or or call the office or send an email uh, for any more information on that. And um, like you said, we've had a lot of players have success through our spring camps and and make our hockey club. So it's a great opportunity and uh, we're looking forward to it again. And for fans here in Merritt, it's open for anybody to come watch? Absolutely. We encourage people to come out, and we've had uh, very good support here last year in the, in the spring camp in Merritt, and I think it's an excellent opportunity to see uh, you know, what the future